What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. So, uh, I know if you've been following me long enough, you know that I love to make DIY sumps. So, I have the opportunity here. I'm making a DIY sump for somebody. Her name is Monica, aka PR Fish Girl on YouTube. Um, so, I've known Monica for a long time, and I finally get the opportunity to make her a sump. I was going to just cut her some baffles because, you know, she can do DIY pretty well. But I said, you know what? Let me do it. I want to kind of do a step-by-step -step how to um, do one of these DIY sumps. Now we're using a 20 long Aquion tank, dollar per gallon sale. Some of my standard Corian. Now a lot of people are unfamiliar with what Corian is. Corian is a DuPont product. It's um, liquid acrylic that is poured out and shaved down to make trays. It's really made for making countertops in kitchens. But I'm fortunate enough to be able to constantly get scraps of this and when I have enough I will uh, build things out of it. So, the basic sump system that we're going to be doing here is, um, it's actually a little bit reversed on her system. This area right here is going to be the sump socks and protein skimmer. Then we're going to have a single baffle, and then a refugium section, and then another single baffle, but I'm going to be using my little catch tray that you can add um, pinky filters or any type of other media that you want to catch. Uh, anything that's going to be coming out of the refugium section before it goes into the return pump section. Now one crucial thing that I don't think I've ever said or not really many people say is whenever you buy a tank and you're going to do a project like this or even use it as a fish tank, make sure you test fill it with water. I will fill it all the way to the very top, maybe even let it overflow depending on the size tank like this one I'm going to take outside, fill it all the way up and I actually will smack all corners of the tank and almost um, to the point where I'm being a little too rough with it, but that's you know that's just how I do things. I want it, I want it to be able to take abuse. Luckily, this is a 20 long. They're usually built, built pretty good. I'm still gonna fill it and test it, and it's usually gonna hold about half the water volume, so it's not gonna be taking full pressure. So, what I want to do is just show you step by step how you can do it or how I do it. All right, so setting up your first baffle, you wanna make sure you have enough room for your skimmer or whatever you're gonna be putting in here. If there's equipment going in here, give yourself plenty of room so that you can work on it, uh, maintain it, check things out. You know, you, you don't wanna cut yourself short on room here because once you silicone all these things into place, um, if it's not big enough, you're gonna regret it. So on all my stuff, I've been using the Marine Land Aquarium Sealant. It's clear silicone. I used to use the GE1, but they added something to it, so now the silicone turns yellow after a short while. So I know that I'm going to need 9 inches of room in here from inside to inside. I already made marks on the inside of the glass with a Sharpie. What I usually do is I'll take a measuring or a tape measure, I'll come over, and I'll make a straight line here, and then on the other side, so that when I put the baffles in, I know that, you know, it's not crooked, it's, you know, side to side or front to back or whatever you want to call it. But since I'm using Corian, it is a half inch thick, and I cut it on a saw so that all the edges are totally perfectly square. Here's the product. I leave a little bit of a, a spot here on each corner because the tank has silicone down here. If I were to leave this perfectly square, it wouldn't sit flush on the bottom. So what I like to do is, I'm not in a rush to make these, so what I will do is I will put a bead of silicone on the bottom, and then I'll actually Put it in the tank and let it sit um, overnight. Now what this is going to do is, is it's going to set up pretty good. The way the silicone actually sticks to the Corian, um, even though it's acrylic, the silicone sticks to the Corian just a lot better than your standard acrylic sheets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here. It's going to sit nice and level because the glass is totally flat and so is this section here. So I already know I'm going to get my level. Put it in, find my marks. Smush it around a little bit. Now I know I'm on my mark. I can put a level on it to make sure that it's standing straight up. But what I do is I just take a tape measure. I measure inside to inside and then I do the same thing to the back. So here, spot on. 
and you can even check here if you want make sure that the bottoms are good so we're at nine and a quarter from the outside to the inside and uh, you probably can't see that but it's nine and a quarter so we're good double check okay we're good so now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna let this set overnight but now I'm gonna do the other side as well all right so before I put in baffle 2 and baffle 3 what I have to do is these little tabs of Corian that I made these are actually going to be the brackets that support the light diffuser or egg crate. This is going to slide in place and put your pinky filter or whatever it is that you want to put in here, a sponge, uh, floss, whatever you want to do. So what I have to do is I have to put silicone on the bottom, pretty much just sandwich these together lightly. I move them back and forth a little bit to get out some air. And then I'll silicone the sides and it makes it uh, really, really strong. So I have to put the baffle three together and the baffle two together. The baffle three, I usually leave a little gap so that I can get some silicone here. And depending on the water level that I want to get in here, which is going to be eight and a half inches, is going to tell me exactly where to put this one. So I'll have to measure accordingly and we'll get these glass baffles put together and in there. All right, so this sump is complete. I do want to show you a couple things that I added and a couple things that might help you. So if you're not used to using silicone and you want to try something like this but you're afraid your silicone joints are going to be real real messy, just use the blue painter's tape. Tape off, give yourself a nice line on all the spots that you want to silicone. Once you apply the silicone to all the joints, wipe it with your finger and then clean your finger off with a paper towel. Don't use water with silicone, it's not, it's not good. Wipe your finger off with a paper towel and then do it again and then pull the tape off immediately. You don't want to let the tape set overnight because when you pull it off, it is going to try to pull some of the silicone. So like I said, this one here you can see, not too bad. My line is pretty dang straight. The corners are a little tough, but when you're using the painter's tape, you can see here that everything is nice and neat. So, came out real good. Now, for hers, it's actually gonna be flipped, it's reverse for most. So here's, like I said, her skimmer section, sump sock, small refugium, little overflow, and then down to the return pump. Now, this I do on all my sumps. Um, I like it because if you have chato or any type of macroalgae in here, you don't really want it to overflow and get sucked into your return pump. So I always install these little pinky filter systems because um, you can cut these, put them in place. You can make this as wide as you want, as deep as you want. I like the water to overflow. The water is going to actually be about a quarter inch above these baffles. So the water is going to go like this. So you're going to have some floating particles, but they get sucked down. It's, it's just like all the sumps I've ever built and it works really well. The heater worked perfectly. You guys can see there is a line right here that this has to be underwater. But if we get level, you got it's definitely going to be below it's actually about a half inch below the baffle and like i said the water is usually about a quarter inch to a half inch above the baffle so this should be submerged close to an inch underwater and even if the um something happens with her overflow say and this return pump sucks all the water out there's always going to be that same standing amount of water in here because of the baffles so the heater will be protected in case of any issues so that's it. Monica, your sump is complete. It's ready to go. I will see you soon so you can get this going. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. See you on the next one. All right, I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates. And in case you haven't seen these two videos, you might want to click on one and check it out. Again, Thanks for stopping by.